In this video, I will provide you with a few ideas on how you can remove a wall for a room addition. Let's just say that you're going to build a room addition on the back of your home and you do not want, you want the uh, entire opening to be a little larger. And uh, sometimes it's not uncommon to have a room addition and have a door or a window and simply just remove the sill or the framing underneath it and then this would be the entrance into the addition or you could just make the opening a little wider that's not common but in this that's not uncommon but in this video here I'm going to we're going to remove the entire wall and put a beam in there so I went ahead and marked where the edge of the uh, room addition was to so that we don't uh, lose track and uh, give us a good idea where uh, where everything is going to line up also so what we have here is an existing conventional roof and I would imagine this would this system would also work well if these were trusses also one of the first things we will need to do will be to support the existing structure so that we can remove the wall and one of the ways you can do that will be to simply build a wall behind the other wall but make sure that you have enough room to get the beam in um, i really don't see a problem with building the wall maybe an inch away half inch away and sometimes you can actually use it as a guide when you're raising the beam um, the new beam also but you need to make sure that nothing would be in the way i mean last thing i'd want to see you do is shove the new wall right up against the um, existing wall and then need to install some type of framing hardware like a column cap or a base cap or something and then of course you got to move the wall or uh, chip away at it so always good to put a little thought into these things before we actually do them so here's the wall supporting the ceiling joist and the roof rafter and sometimes the roof rafter is going to be sitting on top of the wall and when you build your new wall it might not be supporting the very end of it and if this is the case you might need to install some additional blocks or something so that the roof rafter is actually supported also and uh, if you need more help on that feel free to uh, leave a comment in the comment area and i'll make a video on that but let me, let me just see if i can zoom in here save us some trouble you can see here where the roof rafter is sitting over here but it wouldn't be supported with on the with the new wall so you might just need to put a block underneath it you might just need to cut a block and put it underneath there um, so that the roof rafter is fully supported after the wall is built or whatever system you are going to use to support the existing building you can remove the wall studs in between the that we're holding it up now in this one here i'm going to leave the top framing plates we are going to put the beam underneath it so you'd need to cut all the nails off if there were any that were uh, that would be in the way so that the beam would actually um, go underneath it and this right here if you do it this way it's going to be a little lower but sometimes that's going to be fine and it would all depend upon the size of the beam you know if you're going to put a 4x10 in here then um, you're going to have plenty of room but if you put uh, if the engineer requires you to install something that's 16 inches tall then uh, you might actually need to remove the plates which I'll show you how to do that later on in the video here so here you go get a better idea maybe a four by four post four by six post whatever you are going to use this might require require a um, cap here or a strap also there's the beam the other side of the connection and uh, again the lines here are for the room addition now i had this at the edge of the room addition but the post could actually move over if the wall was going to be um, three and a half inches wide here so and and what i let me just go back here sometimes the room addition let's just say that the room addition actually comes off of this wall um, sometimes it's going to be better to run the beam a little farther if you're looking for some additional 
um, structural support for the tie. Now, if you leave the top plate alone and you put the beam underneath it, you probably won't need to reinforce the connection here or the tie that is very important for the structure of the building. Um, any breaks that you have in, in between the um, ties here or the uh, where the walls go might require a strap. So I'm just going to throw that out there right now. In this example here, the beam will be supporting the rafters and the top plates will be cut. And of course, like I said, this, this method here gives you a little more room if you're looking for it. Now, one other thing you can always do is just remove one of the plates. You can always have the top plate run all the way through. Sometimes this is going to be easier because the top plate is going to be nailed to all the roof rafters, the ceiling joists. Um, so it might actually make the process easier to, um, to just remove one of the plates. But again, this would all depend upon how much room you have or how much room you need, um, what you're looking at here. So it'll give you a good idea. The wall has been removed, the temporary wall and uh, the top of the top of the beam would line up with the top of the plate here and don't be surprised to if you do a, an addition like this don't be surprised to end up with you might have a two by four wall but you need a five and a half, half inch wide beam if this is the case you're going to have to uh, figure out a way to make that work also instead of just having a wall a beam that's the same size as the um, the original wall. So if you have a two by four wall that's uh, three and a half inches wide and now you have a five and a half inch wide beam you need to install, you'll just, just need to figure out a way to uh, make that work. And sometimes you're just going to be able to go into the other, uh, into the other room and uh, make it work and it won't be a problem. In the last part of the video, I just wanted to show you that you might need to put a strap. You need to connect the top plates to the beam. And you might also need a concrete footing. And again, this is something that an engineer can provide you with uh, more information. I know a lot of people hate to hear me say that I'm not a structural engineer. But these examples are just to give you ideas of how you can actually assemble it and uh, sometimes that's all we need is just a little a little more information to give us an idea how to actually build something so a uh, strap on each side would continue the tie across here structural tie footings are going to help to support the load that is now going to be transferred to the side of the um, of the home or, or through the post instead of through each individual stud that would have been supporting it before um, along with the footing underneath. So anyway, that's it for this video. Hope it helps. If it does, then uh, feel free to hit the old thumbs up button. And for those